may seem unusual to see me stand up here. Every time I come, I thank the good Lord for this. My knees are shaking. And it does conceal it a little to you. Thank you, Dale, for the introduction. Dale's letter said to me, Dear Uncle Harvey, he had me right in the palm of his hands immediately. <laughs> I think Dale has been as close to a relative of mine as anyone in the church for many years. I was one of his grandfather's boys, and we have quite an association. He said to me, uh, the, the topic is risks of Christianity or some such topic as that. And then he said to me, I would like it if you would talk about some of the risks that Dixborough Church has taken. Somewhere in the year of 1858, 12 families got together in Dixborough, decided to have a church. Now, they didn't take any risk. The board finally said, yeah, we'll build a church, but you can't spend more than $2,500. I had the courage to ask a mathematician one time what that would be worth in our day's figures. He quoted me one figure the next first week, and the second week I saw him, he doubled that figure, and then he qualified it and said, I really don't know. But $2,500, they took some risks because there was a $700 mortgage on the church when they got it built. Faith, hard work, paid it off. Now let's go along a little bit further on this thing. And my first indoctrination to the Dixborough Church was when they were arching the ceiling. We were meeting in the scout cabin. Everybody said, well, we've ruined that English church architecture. But we have to do it. We've gotten rid of the, of the old stoves that sat in the middle of the place. We've got to do it to conserve heat. That, I believe, was about 1941-42, talking about conservation at that time. However, somewhere along in 1949, we decided that this room wasn't big enough to hold six uh, Sunday school classes. It's the only room they had. So a few of those young people in the church decided that we'd put an addition on. We put across the back, across the T. We took some, uh, took some real risks because, again, we, we spot the architecture of the church. No way possible could we raise that much money. It was just an impossible thing. But the day they completed the church, Angel, come forward, says, give me your final bills, I'll pay them. So we have taken some risks. Well, we went along, and uh, when we built that building, I, I well remember one individual man. The ladies wanted a gas stove instead of electricity. One man met with the committee and said, if you put a gas stove in that kitchen upstairs, my wife will never come here and cook because it will blow up someday. Well, since that time, it's been moved to the new kitchen. It hasn't blown up yet, but I think the private person feels the same way. Here's an interesting statistic. I had known it, that had never come to my attention before, but in 1958, now remember I said 1858, they built the church. But in 1958, we bought the village green. And you probably haven't noticed that all of these things were done for people. Now, we didn't need the village green. We had no business going into real estate, but we wanted to preserve the scout cabin, and preserve the old building because there were developers looking for this to put a supermarket over there. So we wanted to protect some of these things in Dixborough. Porch in 1960. And I well remember one family that said, I'll never come to church because you've just ruined the front of that New England church. Now, I didn't travel in New England until some years later, but I saw some churches with porches on them. <laughs> I really did. The big 
thing is that the churches all down there are white. I don't know how they keep them that white. They must have a painting contractor that paints them every year instead of once every five like we do. But anyway, 1964, the pews you were sitting in. Some of us folks can remember the old straight back pews. Along come one of our parishioners and said, I'll buy the pews. Didn't say a word about chancel up here. Gee, it looked funny. The new pews in here and that old black walnut chancel, but we fix the chancel up after that. Again, we ruined something, but for people, for the comfort of people who have back problems and so forth. 1966, put in the organ. I well remember that one. I well remember that one. Music department wanted an organ, and somebody else wanted something else. Why should we spend all the money for the organ? I don't think there's a person in here who has ever regretted the organ. I'm sure the music department has. <laughs> 1969, our Sunday school rooms were inadequate. They weren't large enough. So we built the new building on the back. And immediately, some of our young folks went to work to fill those rooms. We had an influx of young people into the church with large families. Then we come back to 1982. We're in the process of doing some building, repairing new porches. We're going to ruin the architecture. We're going to spoil this church. We're going to fix it so nobody will come. And yet we have to take the risks. Somebody said that a sanctuary of a church was built for the glory of God. I always felt that the sanctuary was built for the satisfaction of the congregation. But I think we in Dixboro can be justifiably proud that the improvements we made were for people to make it more comfortable, to better educate our children religiously, to improve our music program. Just look back and be justifiably proud. We of Dixboro have had faith in our building programs. Now, if we can have faith that the Word of God will take hold of us, it will happen. Amen. This is my testimony in October of 1982.